So this is work done in uh, collaboration with, uh, with, ah, this is in capacity work, okay. With uh, Irene Valenzuela, uh, Fernando Marchesano, uh, Francisco Pedro, and Sean Billeman. And the title is Historic Inflation String Theory. So let me start by recalling uh, the issue of uh, fundamental scalar in physics. We all know that uh, scalars are a bit special in field theory. They are hard to maintain light. Here are the most famous scalars in particle theory. The Higgs, which is supposed to uh, give masses to uh, fermions and gauge bosons. The inflaton, which uh, is a, a very efficient way to understand many aspects of uh, cosmology. Uh, a little bit more in depth is uh, the action, but there is uh, an important difference between these three objects, which is that this one has been observed. So, on the other hand, well, this is going, this is completing the standard model, the consistency of the standard model, but it's hard to believe that this is the end of the story. In particular, it's known that if uh, one just extrapolates uh, what we know of the standard model, the self-coupling of, the, of uh, the standard model high in energies, the potential seems to become a stable, or the vacuum becomes at least metastable at a scale in between 10 to 11, 10 to 14 GV. Of course, there are errors in this estimation, but uh, it seems so. And some people say that this is, there is an instability problem. So that th there should be some physics, uh, new physics turning on at these large scales. And possibly the one of the simplest possibilities would be that uh, about that scale, we have a high-scale supersymmetry. So supersymmetry appears in those large scales, as uh, uh, I guess it was first proposed by some people in the audience. Uh, and uh, OK, the idea is, is simple. Uh, above that uh, scale, the potential becomes just uh, positive definite. So the scalar potential of the standard model becomes uh, stable. And, okay, now the supersymmetry breaking scale is then 10 to 11 to, to the 13 GeV. <coughs> there is an additional motivation, because one could say, well, supersymmetry we introduced uh, to solve the hierarchy problem, so why don't we get rid of, of it altogether? Within string theory, uh, there are additional motivations. Uh, supersymmetry is a fundamental symmetry in string theory. It's there. And also, you need it, uh, even if you, you have such a large scale for supersymmetry breaking, it is hard to build models which are tachyon free if the theory is not supersymmetric. So having supersymmetry is a nice thing and an expected thing in string theory, however, not necessarily all the way down to the uh, low scale. So uh, in certain case, supersymmetry would be needed not to solve the hierarchy problem, but to stabilize the standard model. Uh, which would require that the, the scale of supersymmetry breaking is uh, uh, smaller than 10 to 11, 10 to the 13 GeV, so that the potential is all the time uh, positive, definite. When I talk about the scale of supersymmetry uh, breaking MSS, I'm referring to the mass of the soft terms, uh, not the, the real scale of supersymmetry breaking. The, that's the size of the soft terms. So <clears throat> then the solution of the hierarchy problem will have to be fine-tuning. I'm sorry about that, so possibly a uh, uh, landscape type of idea, although I'm not going to elaborate in that direction. So let us consider, for simplicity, the most, uh, just the MSSM, and the, uh, the, there is, uh, uh, the, we just consider the most general MSSM Higgs mass structure, which is this one. We have a diagonal uh, masses, and then the off diagonal B term, if you wish, there. And then um, there is a fine tuning, which is taking the determinant of this uh, matrix uh, equal to zero. And then at that, uh, if you do that, at that scale, 10 to 11, 10 to 13 GeV, you get uh, a massless doublet, which is uh, uh, this particular combination of HU and HD in the MSSM. So that would be identified with the Higgs of the standard model. Here, tangent beta is not the ratio of any BEV, it's the ratio of these uh, soft masses here. And then there is uh, uh, the orthogonal guy, which is massive, another doublet, which appears in the MSSM. 
Uh, if you look at the scalar potential of those energies, you have uh, the potential of the uh, massive field, which will decouple uh, below that large scale, and we will be left with the Higgs potential, which is going to be just this piece. We know that at that scale, the potential is, uh, seems to be almost vanishing, so that suggests that tangent beta is close to one, because when tangent beta is close to one, cosine two beta is uh, close to zero. Then at that scale, you have a, a, a massless, uh, as I said, the Higgs field, which would be this combination, and this combination, whenever, when tangent beta is close to one, this guy would be massive. And then the potential is around close to zero at that scale, and then you know that then auto, almost automatically the mass of the Higgs, the observed mass at low energy is going to be around 126. In fact, uh, you can obtain this plot. If you just allow free the scale of supersymmetry breaking, you can compute the Higgs mass in terms of the quartic coupling. And if you just assume that the, the two Higgs masses are equal at some uh, unification scale, string scale, compactification scale, whatever, it doesn't make much difference. Then you find that varying the value of the mu term in different ways above the scale of 10 to the 10 GeV, essential, essentially the, the mass you obtain for the Higgs mass is around 126. And by the way, this kind of plot should have been uh, uh, computed before LAC finding the Higgs because it would have been a very nice prediction. Unfortunately, it was a picture after. Anyway, so now let's go to the other topic that of uh, inflation within string theory. We have uh, learned some things already from uh, the talk of Gary. So inflation before, oops, before uh, March the 17th of 2014 uh, looked like this. Um, some chaotic inflation model like the quartic uh, uh, was almost uh, close to the exclusion, so uh, models with uh, with a small r were very popular, and suddenly came this data from BICEP that you already saw, indicating that r could be in between 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. Within <coughs> a chaotic type of inflation, which is this polynomial potential with these powers, uh, <coughs> you obtain those values for uh, field inflaton excursions large, in between 11 to 20 val uh, val <coughs> times the plant scale. So you need uh, it would favor uh, large field inflation. We have learned that uh, uh, the data, in fact, are compatible with just uh, dust, uh, although still there is room for relatively large values of R, smaller than 0.12. So still uh, large field models are well alive. Uh, we will have to wait uh, probably one or two years to settle the question. And still, as uh, Gary said, it is interesting to explore what if these uh, large values of R are found? So if uh, Sessler R uh, values are uh, there, that would indicate the scale of inflation 10 to 16 GeV, uh, Hubble parameter 10 to the 14 GeV, and then in inflaton scale of 10 to the 13 GeV. And uh, now the bell rings. Could that be related to this large scale of SUSI breaking we were, we were mentioning before? It could be. So, uh, okay, I repeat that the SUSI breaking scale here is the size of the subtext. So that's the idea we, uh, we would explore. Then the structure of scale would be like this. We have the inflaton at 10 to the 13 GeV, uh, inflation scale 10 to 16 GeV, and the value of the inflaton traveling uh, above uh, the previous plan scale. So we need, uh, as usual, that the inflaton mass is stable under corrections. Uh, this is the eta problem. We need the, that the, the field, the inflaton, can uh, have a large field range. And then we need the stability under corrections for when the value of the inflaton is large compared to the plan scale. So the tradition is that uh, uh, one and three could be cured if there is some shift symmetry. Uh, a simple way to obtain large uh, ranges for the uh, value of the Higgs field is that there is some uh, periodicity in the inflaton. So within string theory, uh, large inflation uh, can be accommodated uh, in a variety of ways, identifying the inflaton either with an axion, a Wilson line, or a deep brain position. In fact, these things are somehow related under the dualities and as dualities, depending on the case. 
periodicity indoor fields allows for large transplacking excursions, so that's something which is uh, found often in uh, string theory, in principle. And there could be gauge symmetries in, in extended sense, I'm not talking about U and gauge symmetry, for example, of those fields make the potential stable against corrections uh, uh, to this potential. So this is the idea underlying this monodromy inflation that uh, Gary mentioned, but first uh, considered by Silverstein and Westphal, there has been a lot of work, particularly last year after this uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, discovery by uh, Bicep. So uh, I'm going to talk to uh, about the variety of this, which goes under the name Higgsotic inflation. It has this uh, peculiar name because it is the Higgs who is going to be the inflaton, and otic because uh, uh, it is sort of chaotic type inflation. And the idea is simple. Uh, why using the Higgs uh, as the inflaton? Well, it's uh, within the context of string theory, which is, I think, a reasonable context. Uh, yeah, or I would say in any, in any field theory context, uh, having light scalar is not that easy. Okay? So it is uh, already amazing that we have a Higgs so light. So introducing another fundamental field, which is also light to, make <coughs> to get the... Uh, uh, inflation would be an additional miracle, so it would be interesting to try to combine both. In addition, the Higgs has been observed, so it would be nice if both things could be combined. This, in fact, uh, of course, this is a very old idea. Many people have written uh, uh, papers and models uh, with his inflation. One of the most popular ones recently is one in which you have a non-canonical coupling of uh, gravity to the Higgs, but with some parameter. <coughs> group of Shaposnikov et al. I should say that this, uh, that's, that's okay for me, no, no problem, but I don't think it's easy to embed uh, this into string theory. So uh, in any event, I'm not going to talk about that, but about something simpler, as far as I can see. Uh, as, <coughs> as I said, at the scale 10 to the, uh, 11, 10 to the 12 GB, uh, the potential of the Higgs in the standard model is uh, close to zero. And, but there is another massive guy with a mass of order 10 to the 12 GeV also. So again, it rings the bell. So perhaps you can use this heavy guy for producing chaotic inflation with H, the inflaton. As we will say, or we will see, it is a bit more complicated than that. It's not a light Higgs and a massive Higgs. It's uh, something more uh, sophisticated, but this is the, the essential idea. <coughs> so uh, still you need uh, that the the large inflaton dispersion should be possible and the potential should be stable. So what we are going to look is look for a string implementation with some sort of monodromy inflation in which uh, the Higgs is some sort of uh, Wilson line or deep brain position. It can be done both ways because in fact they are T-dual and string theory. So I will concentrate in the case in which the Higgs is uh, correspond to deep brain positions. By the way, I will not address here at this stage full modular stabilization because here I'm going to isolate the, the sector of the theory associated with the Higgs. It will be a more complex uh, problem still to be addressed. Okay, so let me consider the, how you get the Higgs MSSM-like type of fields in maybe obtaining type two oriented for or in heterotic. Here it's a, a, a standard model, toy model uh, <coughs> test of type two B oriented for which you have uh, these seven brains in particular a set of six D7 uh, seven brains sitting locally in the uh, uh, geometry of this form with uh, two torus uh, in uh, the third complex plane, and uh, this is uh, C2 with the singularity which is set four, and here is the action of the set four in the three complex coordinates and the corresponding uh, charm patterns. You don't need to understand the details. Uh, you get the gauge group, which is U3 cross U2 cross U1. There will be, if you have a compact model, there will be some hidden sector, etc. but we are interested only in this sector. And, uh, whoops. Uh, and uh, what is interesting is that you have uh, fields which uh, precisely the behavior and the coupling constants and uh, <coughs> uh, the structure of the uh, Higgses of the MSSM. So uh, schematically, you have uh, these uh, six D7 brains in this uh, singularity. When one D7 brain goes away from this point uh, to the bulk, well, there is a mirror because this is an oriented body has a, its mirror. Then the, the symmetry, this geometrical movement corresponds to the gauging of the standard model symmetry down to electromagnetism and QCD. 
So the inflaton breaks the standard model gauge symmetry. Um, there is a D flat direction, is U equals HD, parameter by the parameter, real parameter sigma, and then the re relative phase theta. So these are going to, to be our two parameters. So within string theory, uh, you can see that the, the, <coughs> the position of the D brain really corresponds to BEVs of these Higgs fields. In particular, this is the position in the third complex plane. This is the position in the, in the two torus. And uh, while the, the real part can be identified with uh, uh, this uh, uh, Higgs uh, uh, field and the other one with this. These are real fields now, and singlets, because uh, they, are, they are defining here. Okay? So let me explain in a bit more detail the uh, degrees of freedom here. So we have eight real scalar in the minimal set of Higgs in the MSSM. Three are uh, uh, scalars yeah. and become massive when there is a bad. Then there are three Gauss and bosons, but you are still left with two neutral guys, this sigma and theta that I told you, which really parameterize the position of the brain. Okay? When you are at the origin, uh, the symmetry restore. When you are away, your symmetry is just QCD times uh, U1, essentially. One important thing to realize is that in string theory, it is not true that uh, what is the mass of a gauge boson? Is it the coupling versus times the bed? No, that's only true in the effective field theory. Uh, the mass of a vector boson here is really the, given by the distance in between the position of the brain and the origin. So that's uh, because, <clears throat> and it's just given by the tension of the open string in between those two points. So the Higgs can have a very large web and travel all this way around the torus, having a value much larger than the radius, still the mass of the W successor never exceeds uh, the compatibilization scale. OK, so the potential is flat up to now. It was a flat direction. But uh, uh, in general, you have in this compatibilization fluxes which are present. It's well known this uh, uh, <coughs> in tight to be oriented for you have this uh, Ramon, Ramon fluxes and Nevesbar fluxes, which combine in this uh, way, in giving rise to a, a complex uh, uh, three form. And <coughs> depending on the tensorial structure, you have this tensorial structure, they give rise to supersymmetry breaking, give rise to non supersymmetric uh, softeners, you wish. And then uh, with this other tensor uh, combination, you get uh, supersymmetric terms, essentially mu terms. So uh, <coughs> we are going to assume that there are. We are in the presence of this uh, type of fluxes. And then uh, we know the Lagrangian, the local Lagrangian for the deep brains, and has the influence given by the dirac born infel action and the chern simon action of the D7 brain. So it's, here is the expression of the dirac born infel action. This is the pullback, and E is just the sum of the metric and the two in the center symmetric tensor. And well, here you have the B2, C6, C8. You need to uh, know much about those. These are the Ramon, Ramon, and Neves bar forms, which appear in type 2B. What is interesting is that uh, uh, in the presence of these backgrounds, the values of these uh, fields uh, depend on the value of the adjoint of uh, U6 and uh, the gauge uh, uh, symmetries. So this is, uh, this is the guy which is, you wish uh, parameterizes the full movement of the, of the Higgs, in particular the components in here, but they are contained in a six by six matrix. So, uh, okay, doing the full exercise, putting these fluxes inside the dirac Borneinfeld and Chen Simon action, in fact, you, you find that they give the same contribution with sums, and you get something of this form for the Lagrange. You get a potential, uh, and you get uh, something which is important. You get a non-canonical kinetic term, which is proportional. There is a correction. It's not just one, but there is this correction, which is proportional to the potential itself. And this is a, a known parameter in terms of the uh, compatibilization volume and the tension of the uh, seven brain. And the potential is something which is just a quadratic potential uh, in terms of the fluxes G and S. Um, and uh, OK, when the G is equal to S, when both uh, SUSI and non-SUSI fluxes are equal, you get, as you can see here, a massless Higgs field. This is the associated to the standard model double, and this is the, the heavy guy. And well, uh, one way to parameterize, uh, so the particular size depends on the relative size of the SUSI breaking fluxes. So that one can define this parameter A, which measures that, and it's in between zero and one. And if you want to obtain a massless Higgs at some, uh, at some uh, which should be identified with the standard model Higgs, a should be equals close to one. 
if you take into account that there is a running in between 10 to the 11, 10 to the 12 GB and the unification scale, it is not uh, equals one, but uh, the, 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 the choice of fluxes should be uh, more closer to 0.83. Okay. Okay, so uh, in angular coordinates in these parameters sigma and uh, theta, this is the way the potential has, um, which this A parameter, which is close to 0.83, if you want to uh, consider the uh, massless guy associated to the standard model Higgs. Uh, sigma, which is the distance to the origin, and theta, the angle, the relative phase in between the, these two fields. So while <coughs> this, uh, there is essentially, in principle, two free parameters, this G tilde, which is associated to the size of the fluxes, so it is associated to the scale of supersymmetry breaking, and the parameter A, but we know that it A is close to, to 0.83. And one can estimate uh, G tilde uh, in this, uh, <coughs> putting all the parameters in here and uh, assuming there is some sort of isotropic compatification, you can estimate that this G tilde is all, always of order one over the Planck scale, times a factor which could be three or 0.3 or whatever, but it's always around one over the uh, Planck scale. So, okay, we, we are left with a very specific potential. There is uh, this uh, interesting point that the kinetic term is not canonical, and it has a, a very special form in this uh, <coughs> non-canonical kinetic term. Uh, for example, if I take the A equals one limit, which is close to the uh, reality of A 0 0.83, you can see, well, the potential is essentially just a quadratic piece for the heavy Higgs. Then you can compute the canonically normalized Higgs in terms of uh, an integral which you can uh, do perform uh, analytically, and you find that the potential, uh, instead of being quadratic at the larger uh, values of the uh, canonically normalized field, is really linear. So it is linear for large inflaton. This is built in. It's nothing that we, I did to lower the uh, power of the inflaton potential. It is there. Uh, this was done in, uh, this is something which in general you have to do uh, an, uh, <coughs> numerically, you cannot do analytically. So at the end you're left with a two-field inflaton model in which you have a metric in field space which has this form. Uh, it's diagonal but still it's non-trivial, <coughs> it's curved. So in terms of two-field sigma and tau, and you can study, of course, the, Calusa, the evolution of your inflaton fields. One of the questions, uh, uh, one would ask is that we are in a two-field inflaton model, so what happens with isocurvature perturbations? There are two large isocurvature perturbations. They are uh, very much bounded by Planck data. So here is the form of the potential. It's, and here is the theta. It is the relative phase of HU and HD. And this is sigma, which is the, essentially the size of the bev of the Higgs. Okay? So the dynamics depends on whether which region you start uh, with. Here, this is uh, theta and sigma again, and these are several examples of trajectories uh, um, which you find. And uh, it is true when, uh, in general, when <coughs> the inflaton starts uh, evolving, not only you have uh, uh, adiabatic perturbations along the way, but there is uh, perturbations in the normal direction, and they interact, and there is, uh, uh, um, whoop, there is, uh, there is uh, precision, there are, uh, Isocurvature curvature perturbations which contribute to the uh, curvature perturbation, so you have to uh, perform a full analysis, and you find that uh, uh, this is the, the log of the, this is the ratio of isocurvature to <coughs> adiabatic perturbations, it's really 10 to the minus 20, 10 to the minus 3, they are really very much suppressed, uh, <coughs> and this is for 50 and 60 e-folds. However, one effect which is present is that uh, uh, Curvature perturbations increase, so R decreases, uh, due that there is a isocurvature curvature conversion. So, uh, so there is some, uh, instead, this is, this numbers here uh, is the ratio of uh, uh, <coughs> the curvature perturbations uh, compared with ignoring the effect of uh, isocurvature perturbations. So you have, get, can get enhancements of, of order two, in fact. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> this is the, I don't know why the, the experimental data uh, have disappeared. Uh, you obtain, this is depending on 50 or 60 e-folds, e 
a value of R in the region 0.07, 0.012, depending on your initial conditions in the potential. But it's always like that. Uh, that here you can see, well, the results you would get that is uh, for some particular set of uh, angles, you, you would get uh, very large R if you ignore the two field effects. But we shouldn't do that, so this is the right answer. And for NS, uh, this is uh, what you get, this is structure in here. So the uh, most common plot, this is uh, R versus NS. <laughs> and this, uh, the colors mean this is uh, for a variety uh, <coughs> of uh, initial conditions. Or values. <coughs> you get uh, most of the, <coughs> for most of the initial boundary conditions, you, initial conditions, you end up in a region uh, close to 0 0.08, 0 0.09. Or the red points is uh, more abundant. This is a rarely, rarely you end up in this region. And this is, by the way, what you get if you ignore the two field effects. You, you would get also this kind of uh, funny structure, which is not there, in fact. So <clears throat> many people uh, are not used to using the dirac borninfeld action for computing a scalar potential and are more used to a supergravity description. Here is a, a, a color potential which gives rise to some of the dynamics I show. Uh, which is this color potential in this way. This is the complex structure of the two torus in which uh, the, the, the DC brain is uh, traveling. This is the complex dilaton, and these are the Higgs fields. This is the kind of uh, color potential that you get in, in this type of uh, uh, <coughs> model. Well, of course, there are other pieces, but the sector which uh, it is interesting for us, then assuming that there is a, a constant potential and a mu term, and you just compute uh, uh, <clears throat> the potential, there is uh, no scale type of cancellation, and the residual potential you are left with is this. Uh, if you assume that the supersymmetry breaking it simply comes from the uh, <clears throat> non-varishing auxiliary field for the modulus, this is the chaotic, I mean, the quadratic structure that we, we showed. But in, if you use this kind of, if you try to use this supergravity description, you are going to fail uh, in the sense that you are not going to get flattening. I mean, the uh, this is going to be quadratic forever. You should include the all alpha prime corrections to this supergravity Lagrangian to be a, able to describe the <coughs> to describe the, the flattening effect to, to get the real potential for large field. One thing which is in, in, interesting is that in, in this uh, supergravity approach, you, you you can see that there are uh, duality symmetries, in particular the complex structure fields and the, this uh, duality transformation. Uh, the the <coughs> dilaton gets shifted. The, but also the Higgs transform, and the, the color potential is not invariant. It is not the color potential which is invariant. It is the full potential which is invariant. The potential is invariant, although the color potential is not. So you expect that the alpha prime corrections should be powers of the potential uh, <clears throat> in order to preserve this, um, which this symmetry would be broken only spontaneously. This is consistent with what we obtain from DBI uh, uh, plus Air Simon expansion. If you do an expansion for small field, you, uh, this is uh, uh, the kind of power that you obtain. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have time to explain, but you can also understand the, the stability of this potential in terms of this caloper sorbo uh, structure in terms of four forms that we're not going to describe. Just uh, a few words. Um, the eta problem, let us know that the eta problem here in the Higgs uh, fine tuning problem, uh, you cannot, they are not independent. You need an inflaton mass of 4 to 10 to 13 GB, but that's also the scale you need to break supersymmetry to get a like Higgs, which is 126 GB, well, to get a like Higgs. So they are, they are not things that you can separate. Uh, the large uh, uh, inflaton range comes from the multiple winding around uh, uh, one cycle, which is uh, the existence of these cycles is common in string theory. And one important point is this, uh, the, there is this generic flattening of the potential for large inflaton, which is something you cannot capture using uh, supergravity potentials. I think we are lucky at the moment, the technology, to use uh, large alpha prime, uh, uh, <coughs> to sum up the alpha prime corrections uh, in the supergravity and equals supergravity, because uh, if not, we, I think we are going to miss important information in the potential inflaton potentials. Reheating is quite high, and it's still compatible with uh, with uh, uh, leptogenesis. So let me come to the conclusions. Well, the Sergis mass <coughs> uh, uh, leads to a stable or metastable vacuum at a scale in between 10 to the 10, 10 to the 13, 10 to the 14 GB. And one elegant way to uh, reobtain stability is that supersymmetry is found at those scales. 
In fact, that range is consistent with the uh, Higgs mass around 126 GeV. Then, of course, minimality. <coughs> economy suggests to study whether the Susi Higgs sector with supersymmetry broken at that scale can give rise to uh, inflation. So what we find is that the MSSM Higgs system may work inducing two-field inflation. Uh, the Higgs uh, degree of freedom inflaton may be realized as a disciplinary position. Uh, <clears throat> of course, there are varieties in which uh, you can realize the, the Higgs in terms of a D3 brain uh, position or a Wilson line that depends on your model building abilities. And uh, uh, fluxes, which are generic in this compactification, then induce a potential which can be computed in terms of the Dirac Bohr interaction action in the chance of an action. And what you obtain at the end is a variant of a two field chaotic inflation with uh, essentially <coughs> something you, <coughs> you have to perform. Uh, uh, in original cases, you, something you cannot do analytically, you have to do it numerically. But essentially, you get something which uh, is a linear like type of behavior. There's a curvature perturbations are much suppressed. And one obtains uh, values of uh, R in this range and also for uh, <coughs> details, which hopefully will soon be tested. So <coughs> one of the virtues of this approach is probably that in one year or two, it could be ruled out or in. Okay, thank you. Questions? So uh, I don't know if I understood correctly, but did you mention that you break the electroweak symmetry at the high scale, at the 10 to the 13? No, no, no. no. Well, <coughs> uh, <coughs> I mean, uh, the inflaton is, uh, is the Higgs, so it's broken at those scale. At the minimum of the potential after inflation, uh, the baby is zero. Okay. What is broken at that scale is supersymmetry, not the, it's like usually in any Higgs inflation model, the Higgs has a bed, so the retroweak symmetry breaking is broken, but at the minimum of the potential is zero, and it's, it's recovered. Yeah. I think there was a question in the back. Uh, hello. So, um, as far as I understood, you started from the point that our vacuum is not stable. Actually, this point is a very discussive one. I, thought, I, I, I see many stable. reviews about it, and it could be stable or metastable and up to plan scales. So, uh, my question is the following. Uh, if, if you propose to uh, see the at the um, scale of 10 to 11 GV, how would you solve problem of the proton decay, for example, because we have already measured that proton decay will lead to the much more higher energy scales. Well, <clears throat> that depends on the details of the scales. Uh, what is important is the unification scale can be large, can be 10 to 15, 16, 17. So there is no, the only problem from proton decay could be if the scalar triplets were below 10 to the 10, 10 to 11 GeV. But if, if it is 10 to the 12, uh, it is perfectly consistent with proton decay. Okay, and another question is, um, uh, will the loop correction give additional mass to the uh, infantron, uh, not to the infantron, to our Higgs? Will the loop correction from such uh, high scale? Well, this uh, is protected. The, the Higgs uh, and the inflaton is protected in several different ways. First, uh, you, you recover supersymmetry, so that cancels some of the corrections. But there is this uh, built-in uh, uh, symmetry which protects your potential, which tells you that any correction cannot come, it has to come in powers of the potential, essentially. So it should be. The potential itself is very small because uh, it's uh, 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 inflaton scale over plant scale to the four. So, it's very, so any, any correction would be very, very small to the potential. So <coughs> uh, there are different ways to see this. You can see in this particular model, you can see it also because of the built-in duality symmetries, also because the built-in caloper sorbo symmetries, they are all related. But this is something which is really stable. I think in string theory, the scalar potentials are always stable. It's not uh, my model. 
by the way, all the action models in string theory, although people don't say it, they are monodromy models, because the monodromy story is something which is built in string theory. It's not up to you. <coughs> you, you don't have actions of other kind. All actions in string theory have a monodromy behavior. Yeah. So they are stable. You mentioned that the, the, the reheating temperature was uh, something like 10 to the power 12 or 13 because your uh, inflation is, is... Well, <coughs> this is just uh, uh, perturbative. We that haven't done it. This is something which we have to do. We haven't done a, a serious analysis of... Uh, that will be in conflict with the uh, Gravitino, right? You, you could have Gravitino problem, no? I mean, this is very model dependent, so I cannot answer to you. It depends on how you do your cosmology. It depends on uh, the rest of your spectrum. Being concentrated and but your particularly the moduli. Your inflaton is, is heavy, right? Is it like 10, 12, 10, 13 GeV? 10, 12, 10, 13 GeV. So you want to produce it thermally, so that's why you want to, the heating temperature to be something like that. So I, I repeat again, is that's very model dependent. It depends what I do, if I preserve our parity and things, I, many, many things. I have one more, one more quick question here. How about non sanity in the model? What? Non Gaussianity. Non oh, Gaussianity? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, well, it's something which uh, we are considering now. I, we don't expect, there are very similar two field inflation models, uh, which, uh, and which is very, very <clears throat> typically, these non Gaussianities are proportional to, to powers of the epsilon and eta. So uh, we would like to find some effect, in fact, no? but uh, <clears throat> we don't expect uh, sizable non Gaussianities, unfortunately. The, the inflation ends uh, the, just uh, usual, usual at the end of the 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 the, uh, the, in, the inflation end does the inflation end with uh, the violation of the parameter in this case. Um, I'm, I'm asking that uh, if the, 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 this model of inflation ends with the violation of the uh, parameter a uh, slower condition. Violation of of uh, the slower slower condition. Slow condition. Ah, small roll condition. We haven't studied the, how the end of inflation takes place, so I cannot tell you. Not yet. So we're... Okay, let's uh, thank uh, Luis Sabanez again.